Welcome to this video presentation which provides an overview of the discrete capture process. Um, I have given an, over, uh, an earlier presentation um, which showed how we captured a real world signal onto the computer using a data acquisition board. Um, now this presentation will provide a block diagram view of what went on during that demonstration. Now I'm also going to support this presentation with another example. This time I'm going to capture my voice, which is a sound, um, using this sound recorder here. Now this is an application that's available on most Windows machines. So let's start off by just capturing my voice. So hit record. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. We'll just stop there now. So that's my voice captured. Um, in this case, the the sound recorder, this application, made use of the PC's sound card, which has an analog to digital converter on it, um, to actually capture the data. Okay, so let's save this data somewhere. So save as. Now you can see down here that I'm specifying a sample sampling rate. It seems to be the default by the application. The sampling rate is 22,050 hertz. Um, and I'm going to save and I'll save it into this file. Overwrite it. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's my data captured. Um, what I'm going to do now is move into MATLAB and take that data into MATLAB. So MATLAB provides a function called WAV read, which reads WAV files. Now a lot of you would be familiar with um, another type of audio format called MP3, which is a compressed audio file, whereas a WAV file is, is an uncompressed audio file. So there's my variable X, um, and it should be just a sequence of numbers. I forget how long it is, but it should be, I think it's about 5 seconds or so, it should be about 100,000 samples. So. So it's the length of x, 126,000 samples. So that means that it was roughly about six seconds long because I know that it was captured at 22,000 samples every second. So if I plot that data, I can see my speech waveform. So testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. That's what I said there. And there was periods of silence at the very start and at the end. Okay. So let's just go back into the main drawing area now and try to outline what exactly happened during that process. Um, so in general when you're capturing a discrete signal you are looking at a continuous signal of some sort. So we'll call this a continuous signal. Continu oh, sorry, must up there. Continuous. which is some quantity, some physical quantity. So we'll just put physical, physical quantity. Quantity, okay. So we have some continuous signal, which is a time varying continuous quantity or physical quantity, sorry. Um, and really what we need to do is convert that into a voltage waveform. Now the reason why we convert it into a voltage waveform is because we have another device called uh, an analog to digital converter which can manipulate voltage signals. So, But in order to convert the physical quantity into a voltage signal we use something called a transducer or a sensor. And the transducer or sensor uh, converts s one energy into another form of energy. And the form of energy as I said we need is a voltage waveform. So voltage is the output of our transducer. Okay. Uh, so let's use an example. Um, we could have a sound energy, which would be the example that I've just given you, uh, which is converted into a voltage signal using a microphone. So that's one example. Okay. In the other demonstration that I gave you, we used light uh, intensity was converted into a voltage signal using the color sensor that I had. Um, but once we have the signal in a voltage waveform, 
we can then convert it into a discrete signal by using an analog to digital converter. So I'll just put ADC, analog to digital converter. So this is a very inexpensive device that can capture uh, a voltage signal and convert it into a sequence of numbers. Now one of the uh, variables that you'd have with an analog to, to digital converter is the sampling rate. So the analog to digital converter you can specify the sampling rate in order to capture your discrete signal. And once you have that discrete signal, which of course is just a sequence of numbers, those sequence of numbers would be converted or sorry, those sequence of numbers will be stored in a computer's memory. So stored in memory. Now in the first demonstration I gave, the data was briefly stored in the memory of the microcontroller and then sent up to the PC's memory um, via the USB cable. Okay, But this is the general process that is followed. Um, now, to finish up, what we'll do is just to we'll sort of verify what goes on. So let's imagine, we'll take our sound as an example. Our sound waveform would look something like this, where we have um, pressure in pascals over time and our waveform might look something like this okay and that pressure um, variation or sound that's what sound is it's just a pressure variation over time was converted into a voltage signal using a microphone which is the transducer that we used okay uh, and that the purpose of that transducer was converted into a voltage waveform. So let's see what the voltage waveform should look like. The voltage waveform will still have axis of time. So, sorry, axis of time. But this time the vertical axis will be voltage. So we'll just use the label V. But the important thing is that the waveform shape shouldn't change. So we should still have the same shape if the transducer has done its job properly. Now I haven't drawn that brilliantly but it should the output of the transducer or sensor should be the same shape as the input it's just that the label will change and also the duration should be the same. So that would be maybe indicative of a 20 millisecond audio signal so that time axis won't change at all um, but the quantity that we're using will change so it'll be voltage at the output of the transducer whereas the input was pascals okay now once we have our voltage signal our analog to digital converter plays its part so I'll just write out analog to digital converter so a very important device in signal processing. Um, it's doing the job of converting the voltage signal into my discrete signal, okay, which is my sequence of numbers. Now, let's just draw one more waveform to represent our discrete signal. Um, so again, two axis graph. And we will use a generic term for our signal because our the amplitude, just say A for amplitude, because now we're just dealing with a sequence of numbers and of course our horizontal axis is now just N or sample number. It's no longer time, it's the N or the sample number. Now we can easily convert into time once we know what the sampling period is, or which is 1 over the sampling rate, um, but it is still just a sample number is is this axis here actually sample number okay and we would represent that signal as a sequence of discrete dots so that indicates that the signal is in fact discrete 
Okay, and of course we'll have more dots the higher the sampling rate that we used. Okay, so the purpose of this demonstration was just to give you uh, a, an outline of the process followed in order to capture a discrete signal from a continuous signal. Um, the main point is that the transducer will change depending on what type of physical quantity you want to measure. So we'll have a variety of sensors. Um, but we need to get the physical quantity that we're trying to measure into a voltage signal. And once we have the voltage signal, which should be a, a very good representation of the original time varying quantity, once we have the voltage signal, we can convert it into a discrete signal very easily using this fairly cheap device called an analog to digital converter, which you can get for a couple of euro. Um, and once you have the discrete signal, which is just a sequence of numbers, we can very easily store that in memory for future manipulation or storage. Okay, thank you for your attention.